How's it going everyone? It's about 9.30 now and uh, the event is just getting out and wow, that was really powerful, uh, really impassioned speakers there. It was wonderful to hear from all of them. They brought really unique perspectives and another thing I was really um, happy to see was on the way out there was a lot of presumably students or young people um, taking their own little videos to about the event, talking about the event. So here's a poster for where we just were at. And, uh, wow, there was, uh, it was expected that there would be, like, some sort of disruptions. The security was so heavy. At first, I didn't think they'd have room for us with all the cops that were packing in that building. Um, but, yeah, tickets got handed out kind of early. Um, when I first showed up, even though there was a big security there and I had my camera with me, I was hesitant to film any of it because I didn't really want to draw attention to me uh, from them. I wanted to get into the event and enjoy the event. And uh, since it is a free event, I'm more inclined to follow those rules about this or that, no recording. Um, even though they stated there was a no recording thing, um, they didn't really stop anyone other than just announcing it. I guess folks are waiting here, expect there's like two or three students. I think they might think that uh, the artists will be leaving from there, or some of the other speakers. Um, but wow, I, I hadn't heard, uh, I mean, I've heard, I, I'm familiar with Roger Waters, I'm a big Pink Floyd fan, um, seen him in documentaries and such, um, but I really was not familiar with the other three panelists, and uh, I'm very glad I got to hear them, because, um, for example, they, they each talked about like their travels and their backgrounds and how it relates, and uh, the people who organized this did a good job of picking people from different backgrounds. Um, the one guy, Dave Mirren, I believe his name is, a sports writer. Um, he's a Jewish person that, because he's been critical of the Israeli military and uh, the oppression of Palestinian people, he's been labeled all sorts of terrible things. And then uh, Mark Lamont Hill, he was a very, he was a fiery speaker. He almost reminded me of like a southern preacher, the way he was really getting into it. And uh, just speaking, speaking some real power. Um, Linda Sarzer, I had never heard her speak before, and I was very surprised at how much uh, zesty New Yorker there is in her. I knew she was from New York, but I guess I just wasn't expecting her to sound totally New York. Um, oh wow, the security guy has a flashy red light. Um, and uh, yeah, it was, it was too bad I wasn't able to record the whole thing. I'm sure it'll be out there. Um, Democracy Now! and all these different press organizations were there. They made it seem like it would be very difficult to record, but everybody was pulling out phones. Everybody was recording. I recorded a, a little while. I took some photos. Um, there was a lot I caught that I was glad I got uh, on video on this crappy little tablet for what it's worth. And then there was uh, also a lot where I was like, oh, I wish I had been recording then. That was really powerful. There was a few times where people in the audience like interrupted or would just start like yelling over the speakers. And uh, I was amazed at how accommodating the, the hosts were of it. It seems like the guy that was getting most annoyed by it was the, the uh, moderator, EJ. Um, but the people that were speaking, they, they almost were having, like, they tried to have back and forth dialogue with the people that were interrupting, that were yelling things like, you're supporting terrorists, or they're shooting missiles, or you're killing our people, or a few of the things that were, like, yelled from the, uh, the thing, yelled from the, uh, the stands. I don't know if I got it on video, but at one point, uh, some guy screamed from the audience, your people are killing my people, when, uh, Mr. Hill was talking, and he's from Philly. And he said, my people from North Philly, killing your people. And so it was, you know, kind of a funny moment, but also kind of highlights the, the intensity that people bring to this issue um, with like my people versus their people, like that sort of mentality. It's very collectivist um, and it's very dehumanizing, unfortunately, sometimes. So it's very exciting to go to that event. As much as I have complaints about the way the no recording slash kind of like, well, you can have a phone, I guess, sort of deal was, um, I actually had to ditch the phone I had to just bring the tablet because, you know, it's like a giant phone, the tablet. Um, and, I, and they were saying, like, you can only have one personal phone or something. There was a guy with two phones, and I guess they let him in. He had two little phones, you know, like a work phone or a personal, I guess. But um, I, di I didn't like that. That was not in the, uh, not on the list of prohibited items was all electronic devices. Which, if they want to do that, they should just write. No electronic devices besides a single cell phone. You know, it could have been easy enough to write. So now, the wonderful task ahead of me of navigating back to the Shire. 
where I lose my right to freely smoke a joint, which I can't do right here anyway because we're on college campus and they have no smoking rules. Um, which I gotta say, I made a video earlier where I was like, oh, there's like no cigarette butts on the ground, which, I mean, hey, they get their little fascism, but there's no cigarette butts. Oh, there's one. But, I mean, that it is a nice improvement, but I'm not sure I like the trade-off.